are, so really our prospect journey, they come, they tour, and then the magic begins. We wish they put down a deposit here every time, but typically they don't. We just have to keep following up until they move in. So you guys said your biggest challenge that relates to follow-up is reaching my prospect on the phone. The second is time. I never seem to have enough. Third is determining the next best step to move the sale forward. So we're going to discuss all of that. Then um, you also said, what have you found to be the most effective way to follow up? Clearly phone, phone and email used jointly. So got that. What's the greatest challenge you face in closing to the USC? Lack of urgency to move now was by far the biggest response and getting decision makers on the same page. So we're addressing all of this in our process. And I hope you're seeing with some of these objections, lack of urgency, that you're seeing that the lack of urgency could almost be part, part our fault because we're not discovering what we need to to create the urgency. We're, we're kind of dragging it out, and that's sort of our punishment for not maximizing you know, those conversations. But if we want to work smart, not hard, we can shorten that sales cycle by really drilling in. And um, you know, I think sometimes it seems like too easy of a solution. What, you just ask a lot more questions and you close more people, but it's, it is true. I mean, I always say the closing should be the easiest part of the sales process. Asking for the check should be simple. If you have the real needs on the table, and the, then you have the conviction, the passion. The close is really hard when you don't have the needs on the table and you're kind of forcing it and talking people into it. Then it's not fun at all. So we're going to go into this, and, and we know, and I want to address income producing activity because it's, it is the lifeblood. And I know um, through my life cycle, I mean, I've had a business for 25 years, there is a direct correlation. When there's activity, there is success. And it is my golden rule. And we went through a crisis in my company a couple years ago where, you know, we just had another CEO step in and I kind of checked out because I'd been doing it so long. And I was like, what's it like to be a stay-at-home mom? <laughs> kind of went to La La Land for about a year, almost lost my company and had to build it back up. And let me tell you what, we built that sucker back up in three to six months and it was just as strong as before coming from scratch. And I, all I would tell my team is, guys, thank God you hung out with me and stayed with me, but where this activity, this success, if we just keep our focus on activity, this business will rebound. And man, I couldn't believe how fast it rebounded. And it just goes back and I love, you know, just constantly being reminded there's a couple golden rules in sales. It's where there's activity, there's success. And you know what, the sex, success is harder to, to earn when you don't have great systems. It's kind of you're in that law of numbers, but even people that aren't real talented can succeed with sheer effort and lots of activity. But if you have great systems and high levels of activity, you can go and do anything. Fill your communities to capacity. So IPAs, you guys, um, it sounds to me, are very, very keen. I don't have to explain what this is. But what I would say to you, just because you're in sales and I'm in sales and I've taught sales my whole life, is that you must make time consistently for income producing activity, even when it's crazy. Um, you want to not let that pipeline get empty. And what we see most in senior housing is we move a bunch in and then the pipeline's empty. Then we move a bunch in and the pipeline's empty. So if you use your revenue growth calculators as your guide, and stay focused on the number of appointments you need weekly and hit that goal, if your conversions stay the same or increase, you're gonna be where you wanna be by the end of August. That's, you're gonna be your guide. And we'll work with that. I'm gonna update Jennifer after the seminar who's leading the academy, make sure she knows exactly what our focus is. And she's been working very closely with Megan. Um, but but we, to get those appointments, we know it's IPAs. It's, we gotta be on the phone. We've, you know, we wanna work smarter, when we're in front of somebody, before they leave, we're locking down that next appointment, next step, and not being afraid to ask for it, because that's one less phone call now I have to make. And then when you're on the phone with someone, if you can't get them to take action, it's not all touch base later, it's, we're gonna schedule that next step right now. And you, know, you can even say, it's so tough to pe reach people, and I know you're busy, if we can just lock down a time for 10 minutes to touch base, say next Thursday, that would be fantastic. Is morning or afternoon better for you? at least try to lock it in. I, I'm shocked how many people were like, sure, yeah, that works for me. Um, and and then, honestly, we didn't even used to, probably two years ago, I didn't always set the next step before I got off the phone. I would just call them back. And then I realized, I'm always learning too, like, why don't we just set that next step? And I learned that when I was teaching another salesperson I was, that came into my team. Wait, I want her being efficient. Let's just schedule that next step before we get off the phone. And, and you can pretty much do it most times um, and if not, you let them know when you'll be following up if you can't get them to commit. Um, I want to challenge you to have, as we talked about in time management yesterday, your 
prime calling times blocked in your calendar. What we mean by prime calling time is, you know, when are you calling where you, you make the most contacts? It doesn't do any good to make 50 dials and nobody answers their phone. Every one of us in our own markets has a prime calling time, which means when you call, a good 20% of the people you're calling are going to at least answer their phone, if not more. And, and, and it's, sadly, it's not times we like. It's usually like five to seven. You know, Saturdays are fantastic prime calling times in senior living. But you know, some of you have to leave by five, so you're going to have to find what is that best time in your day where you can actually reach people. Mine, as I said, is Tuesday, Thursday, two to four. Those are my magic times. I can reach people. Um, we want to stay in that selling zone and really be committed to our IPAs. Now, when you're on the calls, I'm going to teach you this five-step phone system. I don't know why it's doing this, so just go get it all up there. So we're going to obviously, I don't have to talk to you guys, use your CRM, but what we want to do is engage people in meaningful conversation. We don't want to just smile and dial and get beat up on the phone and rejected. And it's, it's not fun when that happens. So we want to get three yeses in the first three steps, which is about 60 seconds or less. We want to main control, maintain control of the call, and we want to convert 50% into appointments of anybody we speak to. That's an aggressive goal, but why not start there? <laughs> why not? Seriously, why not? Um, and see where you fall. So our first step is the opening. I've, some of you might use this, remember this from a long time ago. But most of us, we know when somebody is prospecting. We know it's a solicitor immediately. And there's this unlike, there's this kind of like thing in, in our society where it's OK to beat salespeople up. You can be rude to them. You can do whatever you want to them, right? People are mean to salespeople. And I always say the last thing I want to do is sound like one. And the people that wing their sales and always say they don't need training and because they don't want to sound like a salesperson, they'll tell me, I don't want to use your training. I don't want to sound like a salesperson. I'm like, can I just drop you? Because I bet you sound like one. Because you don't have a system. And when you don't have a system, people ramble. And it's proven salespeople ramble because they don't want to sound unintelligent about their product or service. So they talk and talk and talk until they kind of run out of breath. And that's why they talk so much. And what I, this is all about is control. So a normal sales call might start like, um, ring, ring, hello. It is Mrs. Smith and this is she. Hi, Mrs. Smith. It's Tracy Bill from Normandy Estates. How are you today? Very normal, right? So a couple of things are wrong with that. She knows I'm selling. Because to be honest, we're not like friends. I'm not just calling her to invite her to a cookout. She knows I want her to come move to my community, and that's why I'm calling to follow up. The other thing is I just asked her how she is. She's going to get complete control of this call. And the call will be 45 minutes, and we never even talk about the community because all I heard about was how her dog went to the vet and had something lodged in its intestine, right, for 45 minutes. You guys know what I'm talking about. I would, I would so we need to be in control. So this is nerve-wracking, this very first step. But I promise the first couple times you do it, you're going to go, oh my gosh, it works. Everyone does that. They're like, oh my god, it actually works. OK? So I challenge you, and we're going to role play this. And this is on your follow-up to visit connection sheets, because again, we believe in cheating on the test to make it easy for you. Ring, ring, hello. Thank you, ma'am. Hello. Um, is Mrs. Smith in? This is she. Step one begins. Hi, Mrs. Smith. It's Tracy Build calling. So you're just pausing, right? So now she's thinking she knows me. She probably does recognize my name. And even if it was a cold call, they'd think they knew me because I sound like I know them. There's something magical about the word calling. It's like, sorry, I have to sneeze. My students, one time a student said to me, it's like wrapping a big bow around my name. She's like, I don't even know why, but everyone says yes. And it's true. We've done this for 20 plus years in every industry like that we've ever trained in. It works. The key to the opening is you have to say your first and last name followed by the word calling. If you don't say calling, you will not get a yes. So if, if, if it's not working and you're not getting yeses, you might want to record yourself or kind of make sure you're saying calling. So underline that if you need to on your follow-up to visit connection sheet. So there's a couple things that will happen here. Possible responses. Do not focus on the 1%. Focus on the 99. They might go, who? And you go, Tracy Bill? Yes. So you still get it. Just had to work for it. Sometimes they just sit there. That is the, that's the torture. That is the torture. So I always tell people, look, just go. Like, give it a second. They don't respond. Just go to the next step. I don't expect you to sit there for a minute. So ring, ring, hello. It's Mrs. Smith, and this is she. Hey, Mrs. Smith, it's Tracy Bill calling. If you recall, we had toured at Normandy Estates uh, yesterday afternoon. Oh, yes, and that's exactly how it'll sound. When they pause, they're thinking, Tracy, Tracy, Tracy. 
Who's Tracy? I know Tracy, don't I? Is it, you, know, you gotta help them out, okay? They might, they'll say yes, 99, so nine out of 10, 9.9 .9 out of 10, you're gonna get the yes. Sometimes they'll go, oh, hi, which to me is a yes, it means go, they recognize you, and that's good. I've maybe like a couple times in my life had somebody go, and this is cold calling out of the phone pages to prove this system out, do I know you? And in that case, I'd say, well, actually, if you recall, or I understand. So if I was calling a referral source and I said, hi, is Janet N, this is she. Hi, Janet, this is Tracy Build calling. Do I know you? Well, I understand you're Dr. Jones' business manager. Oh, yes, I am. Do you have a quick minute? Oh, uh, sure, what's this about? So that would be like a cold call. Better than going, hi, Dr. Hi, Mrs. Jones, this is Tracy Build. I'm with Normandy Estates. How are you today? She's like, I'm very busy. That's kind of what they're thinking. So the opening is, What's hard about this is you've opened your sales calls the same way your whole life in most cases, and it's probably like how I started. Hi, this is so-and-so, how are you doing? Very, you know, it's just conversational. Once you do this, like, you will never be treated like a solicitor again. This is how we get companies and call centers and things to overcome call reluctance and fear of the phone. They, they, we have reluctance because we're facing rejection and people are rude. You remove that. Even when people reject you and say no at the end, they're so nice to you because they feel like they know you. We're demanding their respect. So that's the opening. Whatever happens, yes, pause, go to the next step. That's the rule. It's like monopoly, go. Go to the next step. So then we're going to disarm, and our goal is to get another yes here, and we're not going to get it 99% of the time. We're going to get it 100%. Every time you're going to get a yes here. And the way you're going to do it, in most cases, since you're doing follow-up calls, you're going to say, if you recall. In this system, there's two things. You're either recalling an event, like a tour, they came to an event and function, or you're stating a fact. So if you're calling on referral sources, it's more stating a fact. I understand you're an estate planning attorney here in the Tampa area. Yes, I am. What else are they going to say? Um, or if you recall, we had toured here at Normandy yesterday afternoon. Yes. Hi, how are you? I'm great. Never ask, how are you? The whole call is going to be about them. Do you have just a quick minute? So this second statement, it's on your follow-up to visit connection sheet. You're going to use 90% of the time you guys are going to use the if you recall state, statement. So you're recalling whatever occurred before. You know when you're calling those old leads in your database, with, with the database cleanups, so you can make those warm. You know, is, uh, is Jack in? This is he. Hey, Jack, it's Tracy Build calling. Who? Tracy Build? Yes? If you recall, you had, a, um, you had toured here at Normandy Estates. It's been about, um, it's about eight months ago. Now, you take an embarrassing situation and you make it a lot better. I did? Yeah, you did. Do you have just a quick minute? Sure. What's this about? I know this because this is what happened on the calls when I was calling on your old leads a long time ago. Um, and I'd get them right into the discovery phase. Every, um, I'm telling you almost every time because they're curious, they're nosy, like, who are you, what do you want? But they don't think you're a solicitor, and that's the good thing. So our second part of disarming is just a quick, do you have a quick minute? We have studied this. You do not want to say ever, is this a good time to talk? Because they'll go, well, not really. I mean, I remember I've listened to thousands of tapes. This was phenomenal to me. I don't know why. I don't care. All we look for is what works. I don't have to be able to explain it. Don't you just want to know what works? So we found whenever you did, is this a convenient time to talk? Or we heard, um, did, I, um, did, did I catch you at a good time? It was typically a no more often. But when a student would say, do you have just a quick minute, it's like people, I, I assume, the reason it works is people can handle a minute. And the best thing you have going for you is they've already said yes twice, they're nosy, they're kind of wanting to know what you want, their curiosity is getting the best of them, so like, well, I have just a minute. That to me is a yes. So that's your third yes. So you're like five seconds into the conversation. Then you're gonna go into the reason step, okay? So you've already learned the rest, this is good news, you don't even know it yet. So when you're calling, a few things, you always want to use the word calling. You have to pause. If you don't pause, they can't say yes. You can't dominate the conversation. When people learn this, what they'll typically do is go, hi, is Jack in? This is he. Hi, Jack. This is Tracy Bill calling. If you recall, you had actually toured Normandy States with me about a week ago. Do you have a quick minute? What did I just do? I combined all the steps. And psychologically, I'm not engaged. He's not engaged. I got one yes when I could have had three. When you get someone in the habit of saying yes, 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 don't you think more are going to come? Yes, yes, yes. That's the best thing you can hear in sales. So we're setting up the conversation psychologically to put them in a positive state of mind to lower their, not even get their guard up in the first place so they're not threatened. 
The reason for the call is now what you're calling for. So when you guys are making calls, you're either going to be calling to get permission to ask questions in a follow-up call. So this is going to be all of your tour follow-ups, your visits. People visit, within 48 hours, we need to do our follow-up to a visit connection sheet. But let's say they've been in your database, you're working them, you want them to come back to an event, a function, meet some residents. You may not be calling to actually ask questions, you might just be calling to um, book an appointment, okay? This step always starts though the same and ends similarly the same. It's always gonna start with the reason I'm calling is, because they need to know why. We wanna be concise. The reason I'm calling is, you're gonna fill it in with your own filler words, um, and, and you're always gonna end it with either the permission to ask questions or an optional close. So if I'm calling to invite someone to an event, I might say, well, the reason I'm calling, Jack, is um, when you were here last week, you'd mentioned that you love poker. And we have a poker tournament coming up on Friday night. I immediately thought of you. We also, on Saturday, are having a cookout, and I thought it'd be a great opportunity for you to meet more of our residents. Um, and I wondered which might work best for you, possibly Friday night poker or Saturday, night, uh, Saturday cookout. So now I'm just calling to book some sort of next step. He says, oh, I'm really busy. I don't have time. Thanks for calling, though. Absolutely. Hey, why on the phone? Can I ask you a quick question? Sure. And then I'm going to think, what? I'm pausing. I'm like, what question am I going to ask? I don't even know right now. <laughs> so I might say, um, you know, um, I know you and I talked about you needing some time to make a decision, and the best way to kind of do that is to acclimate yourself to our community, experience it, engage with residents. Um, we, as you know, we have a lot going on here. Um, would, would something like inside our community or something like an out excursion on our bus, which would appeal most to you as I look at our calendars and what's upcoming? Because I'm... Um, no, I want to go in the community. I want to see what's happening there on site. Fantastic. Well, I'm pulling out our activities calendar. we got a few other things coming up, right? So now I'm just trying to close one last time. So now if I'm calling to do a follow-up to a visit, what we can do, let me get my notes out um, from Jason from earlier. Hey, Jason, you want to role play with me again? <laughs> Okay. Ring, ring. Hello. Is Jason in? This is he. Hey, Jason. It's Tracy Build calling. I'm sorry? Um, if you recall, we had toured together at Normandy States um, a couple days ago. Oh, sure. Yes. Do you have just a quick minute? Um, I'm busy, but uh, minute will be fine. Wait, can we act like you're the dad? Because that's who I would be calling up. Okay. What was his name? What? Walker. Walker. Okay. So it's Walker now. Um, so the reason I'm calling is I just wanted to follow up with you, Walker, while you know, our community was fresh in your mind in our visit. I so enjoyed meeting you and, and your grandson. And I wonder if I can ask you a couple quick questions. Uh, sure, that'll be fine. Oh, great. What was your overall impression of our community? I was just curious as to your thoughts. Uh, it, was, it was nice. Was there anything that stood out about it that appealed to you in particular? Uh, I really enjoyed meeting, uh, I think his name was Chester in the hallways that we met. Yeah, Chester's great. <laughs> Chester's always around. He's probably one of the most active residents in our communities. He's always doing something fun. Um, so no, he, he actually enjoyed meeting you as well. He actually mentioned that to me when I saw him at breakfast this morning. Um, I'm kind of curious, how do you feel um, our community compares to some of the other options you and Jason have been looking at? I know you were doing a couple visits together. Yeah, um, well, I, I'm really kind of, they're all running together because we hit three communities in one day. Um, so uh, that's a lot yes it is. and I know for myself you know and I, and I work here that when when I visit that many it can be a little bit overwhelming I, I'm just kind of curious um, with you doing that research and looking at that many properties was anything coming or rising to the surface for you as far as kind of what would be most important to you about a community that you might choose uh, well, with me enjoying my walks every morning, the walking trails are really what pointed uh, or what stuck out to me. Okay, great. Um, and I know that we showed you a couple here, and um, we, we have a couple walking clubs, uh, both men, men and women, co-ed. Uh, people definitely here like to get their exercises through walking, so I know that um, they would love to have you as part of their walking clubs. Can I ask, so... Um, is, is anything else going to be important to you? I'm just curious, Walker, from, you know, food, socialization, any of the other items we talked about, but is there anything else standing out that would be important to you in a place you might call home? Am I going to be able to watch my Atlanta Braves play baseball? Oh, not only will you be able to watch them play baseball, you would, if you wanted to, be able to watch along with about 30 other people. 
Um, we have a very uh, avid sports group here, people that watch football, basketball, baseball games together. I mean, that's a highlight um, of some of our weeks here. Is that something you'd, would you, do you prefer to watch sports in a group setting or do you, would you prefer to be alone? Are you more of a loner? All right. Well, it's kind of fun when you're uh, among others. There's a lot of camaraderie and um, people, you know, get to really enjoy each other's company and, and um, enjoy the game together. So can I ask, um, Walker, what, what for you is your greatest concern as you go through this process and, and you're learning about these various options? The move can be a little daunting. Is that what you're saying? Not necessarily the move, but the memory. Ah, I see. Okay. So, um, you know, and, and I, I completely respect that. And those memories will still be with you in your heart and in your mind. And what's really exciting is there's a lot of new memories to be made here at our community with amazing people who, you know, I know will be so excited to meet you and get to know you and participate with you and those things you love from your Bible studies to your um, your games and, and really immersing yourself in our community life. Um, I know that um, Jason was here with you um, and, and he's really on board and excited and and I just want to just for your own peace of mind when you make a move those people are still going to be in your life you're just going to have more people in your life that are going to be a part of your life. Um, I wondered, you know, I couldn't get a feel when you and Jason were here. I know he's excited and he loves you. It's it's so evident so much. Um, what kind of time frame were you guys discussing, you know, as you were going about your visits and, and looking at just a possible move? Uh, well, so it was up to him. It would be last year. Right. Uh, I just don't know. Okay. Not a problem. Were there any of the villas that, or apartments that we looked at? I know we looked at about three that stood out to you or that appealed to you more than the others? Uh, it was definitely that one bedroom with the gym. Okay, right, because you have a home office, correct? Yes. With everything set up, and that would also give you, and again, remember when you're here, and I know I pointed out a few areas when we were walking together, but you're, you know, it's your home. You can have your Bible study in your home, and that den would give you the extra space. You can also use any one of our um, you know, common areas to our, our um, dining areas. So you have a lot of options there for your Bible study. Um, was there anything as far as our services? You know, I was showing you everything from the walking trails um, to the different places you can enjoy your Bible study to, um, you know, watching the game, you know, in the pub with the, the other gentlemen that are involved in that pool club. Was there anything else that that you saw that really stood out to you that you liked or you thought would really enrich your life? Uh, well, I, I do enjoy reading biographies, so the library did stick out. I noticed a lot of biographies I haven't read yet, so uh, yeah, reading, reading is good. Yeah, and we are consistently bringing in new books because our residents seem to be avid readers. So, um, and, and here, what's great is you make a request and, and our staff is here to please. So we're always going to try to make sure that we have what you need. Um, it's all about your life experience here. We're just here kind of in the background to support it. Um, so based on what you told me, I mean, it sounds like you guys have been busy <laughs> and uh, you've been looking around and I know that can be very overwhelming. Um, but in listening to you, it sounds like what's most important to, to you is really just being able to maintain the life that you have today in your new home. You want to still do your Bible studies, watch your sports, um, be able to go walking. And um, what I'm sensing is that you have such a wonderful life, and we just want to, you know, look at maybe you're doing that in a different home and then adding more people to those memories and making more friends and, and being around more people. Does, does that sound correct? Well, in part, yes. I, I just, uh, just this house, you know, I've been here for 63 years. It's going sure. to be hard to move. That's a lot of memories in that house. Why do you think Jason's so concerned about you moving and, and, and transitioning away from your house? I'm just curious. Uh, I had a fall last summer. I was stepping out of the shower and didn't pick my foot up high enough. And 
I cracked a couple of ribs. Mm -hmm. uh, since then, I've had pneumonia two different times. Uh, I, I bounce back stronger every time, though, so I don't know why I'm so worried. Sure. And I know that, you know, we didn't discuss that, and I'm so sorry. I didn't know that it happened. But um, I'm just going to say, you know, so many of our residents, including Chester, who you met, had similar experiences. You know, they're perfectly fine. They're independent. They're off living their life. Chester actually still goes on cruises and travels a lot. But it was a similar situation of just, you know, his kids didn't like the thought of something happened and he lives alone, that no one would be there to help and, and realized for him, you know, and I know he's fine. He, he lets me tell his story. He was just getting more and more isolated. Um, and, and he's made so many wonderful friends here and, and he has the peace of mind that if something would happen, there's so many neighbors and friends around as well as our staff to help immediately. Um, you know, I, I, what I want to make sure you understand is that I under, this is going to take time, no doubt. Um, we're here to help you and I know that Jason is very concerned and really what I would love to do as the next step is just invite you back to you know, enjoy our community doing something that you love. And I would love for you to do that with Chester. Um, Chester's a walker. Um, I know you also have a dog and Chester has a dog and um, maybe we could set up a time for you just to come back and have a breakfast or lunch. And I know you do morning walks and maybe walk together and bring um, Buddy, your dog, and, and stay for breakfast. Would, would um, perhaps, let's see, today's Wednesday, would Friday morning or even Thursday work for you if I can accommodate that with Chester? Uh, well, if I did that, I would have to leave Buddy at home. He's not very sociable with other dogs. Oh, okay, okay. Right, that, I totally understand that. So are you thinking um, Friday or Thursday? Uh, can I check my calendar first and call you back? Sure, you could. Or if you'd like, um, what if we just said Friday to give you more time? I need to reach out to Chester anyways and I can touch base with you Thursday afternoon to make sure it works. Uh, I guess that would give me time to check my calendar. Okay, and can I ask what your favorite breakfast items are? Is there, thing, there are things that you really maybe haven't had in a while that you enjoy for breakfast? Well, being a diabetic, I, I have pretty much the same uh, breakfast every morning. I fry myself some bacon and uh, <laughs> scramble up some eggs. Okay. Is there something that you're allowed to eat that maybe you haven't had in a while we can treat you with? I love grits. Are diabetics allowed to have grits? I'm not diabetic, so let's just say they can. Okay. You know what? What if we make you up a special batch of grits? And can I ask, do you like them with cheddar cheese, plain? Like, what's your favorite kind of grits? Southern style? If you could maybe mix in some of that bacon with it. All right. Well, let me get with my chef. He aims to please. So, okay. So, you know what? And, and, and Walker, I want you to feel comfortable. And again, I'm just going to greet you, hand you over to Chester. And I think it'd just be really good for you to even just pick his brain about his move. And, you know, he had a lot of memories in his home, too. And how did he process that? Um, and, you know, just enjoy a nice walk together and then come in and, and enjoy the grit. So we'll, we'll put together a nice breakfast for you. Um, but I will touch base if it's okay with you Thursday afternoon just to make sure that time still works. All right. All right. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs> you were hard. <laughs> I was going to give in, just so you know. I was so close. Cause, but I thought, let me just pause, because we were both in a very uncomfortable situation. Like, when the let me check my calendar thing is a stalling tactic, you all know that, and I know that. So I thought I'm just going to be in that uncomfortable space because sometimes we need to get people out of their comfort zones. Now, I wasn't going to be pushy. I just was patient, right? Um, you, again, will have a better idea. The whole point I want to take you through is, um, so, so how does that follow-up experience that I created for him compare to maybe what you do right now on that first follow-up call? Any feedback? What do you, a lot longer. Is that better or worse? More qu good. Okay, I'm glad you saw that. More time to ask more questions. And build the relationship. And I find, and maybe you're different, but when I was doing all my studies and building these, these systems, and we still see it today, we don't make people send in tapes, but on every tape I pretty much ever got on a follow-up call, and Lorianne Poutier, one of my clients, gave this a name. They're called Howdy Duty Calls. 
She'd be like, thank you. She was like, thank you for teaching my team not to do how to duty calls anymore. And we would laugh so hard because, I mean, we've all been there. How you doing? I'm great. Wonderful. I just wanted to follow up and see what you thought about our community. It was amazing. Now what? This is really rough, right? Or, so it's how do you do? How you doing? Or um, if it's been more, you know, one or two, maybe it's the second, third follow-up call, it's usually just calling to see if you're still interested in possibly making a move to Normandy Estates. Not, not really, not right now. And you could just, I mean, all these thousands of tapes I would listen to, I'm like, oh, this poor person. Because, you know, I, you know, I mean, you know how that feels because you can sense the salesperson thinking, now what? Now what? I have them on the phone. Now what? And it's kind of like, so, okay. And it's awkward conversation. Do you know what I mean? It's like pulling teeth. Because they're thinking, why did I answer the phone? And you're thinking, they're not being very responsive. We all want the yes. We just don't get it. We would love it. They went, yes, actually, I was just thinking about that at breakfast this morning. <laughs> this is not usually what we get. So the goal of the follow-up to the visit sheet is to really get them talking just like in the inquiry sheet. Because what does talking and discovery do? I mean, it helps them build value. This guy here, if I didn't have this system, I would have no hope of getting him back in for a tour. Because he was work. You know, he, and you, you were trying to be tough on me, right? I was, I was playing calls about that. Okay. But my goal was to make him think. Because in my mind, I'm thinking, he called, he came in, he just doesn't know what he needs. So I have to help him discover that through great questions. So I asked all the questions on the sheet. I knew I was pushing my limit a little bit with how long it was getting but he was still engaged. And that's just the, the comfort you're gonna have to have. But I will tell you, you have to get beyond three to four questions. Remember yesterday, trust. They know you now, but they have to open up. It's like if somebody just walks up to you and says, you know, asks you a, an intimate question, like you're not just gonna answer it right off the bat, but if you're, you're having a conversation that's light and airy, how many kids do you have? How old are they? You know, um, where do they go to school? And then, all, you know, and they're digging in, and all of a sudden you might start learning more private things. You know, they might share with you an illness, or they might share with you something the child's going through. But they're not going to do that right up front because they don't trust you. People have their guard up, they're defensive, and most of the time people just don't want to deal with things that are uncomfortable. So we're making him talk about what he doesn't want to talk about. Can, can you see that with that tool? How many of you have used the follow-up to a visit connection sheet, like consistently? Is anybody using that one right now? You had it. Are you using yours, or did you just bring yours to the meeting? <laughs> okay. So, and also, these sheets will take the place of other sheets. We don't want a ton of sheets going around, right? So we're going to take the old things away and replace them with the new things. So I want to make that clear, because otherwise you will lose your mind. Um, and again, we're going to keep customizing over the next 12 weeks until they're perfect. So we need your feedback. It's very important. If you have a dynamic question you're asking, it's getting phenomenal results. You're going to let us know what that is. We'll have other people try it. If it's really powerful, we'll add it to the sheet. We'll take something else out, that type of thing. So um, what did you think about the, the, the opening and disarming? Do you see the flow of that? It's very just conversational. And, and this is why you also want to block your calls and make them all at once because you get into the flow. And, um, and so we've got the opening and disarming is right on. You can't see it, but it's right at the top of the connection sheet so that you have it in front of you because we don't expect you to memorize that, particularly when you're new to the system. And there's a few other things we recommend before this, though. And, and um, let's see. Uh, maybe we don't have it in here, but it's fine. So we went through these steps. Let me get through this. You've learned all that. That's the good news. Um, so in follow-up, here's our first week follow-up. Bear with me, because you're not going to maybe like it. Um, but we've tested it. It absolutely works. So the person comes and visit. We, for the last like um, three years, have taught to do a same-day thank you call. And it's been a game changer. And I'll tell you where it came from and why we do it. Um, I did run it by Megan, and you said absolutely, because I wasn't sure it would be a fit for you guys. Um, but basically, the same-day follow-up call is really powerful. You're not allowed to sell. It's a courtesy. It's just a trust builder. So let's say he, Jason and his grandfather were in 
during. I'd probably call both real quick. I might get voicemail. I might reach one of them. And all you do is ring, ring. Hello. Here, let's do it. Jason, ring, ring. Hello. Is Jason in? Hey, Jason, it's Tracy Build calling. Oh, hey. Hey there. Um, sorry. <laughs> do you have just a quick minute? Hey, the reason I'm calling is I want to say thank you so much for coming in to visit me today and, and you know, really consider our community uh, for your grandfather. And, and I just want to say thanks and how nice it was meeting you and, and your grandfather and see if any questions came up on the ride home. Oh, it was great visiting. I, I really appreciated you taking the time. Uh, the only question really is came up was kind of quiet on the ride home. I think you were thinking. But the only question you really was asking me was, Okay, and then we can address that, right? But here's the thing, so perfect. So when we, we test our materials, when we first started with this question, I was on a hard hat tour in Carmel, Indiana. It is a, a brand new CCRC, is on the cover of REIT magazine, it's beautiful, incredible. And we've been working with them through the pre-sale. And um, we were on a hard hat tour with a family and right during the tour, the competitor they just went to called. And I was like, uh-uh, and they took the call right in front of us. And they're like, oh, that was a place we just left. And I noticed how pleased they were. They're like, they were calling to see you know, how I was doing and say thank you. And I was like, ooh, nobody beats us to the close. <laughs> so I was like, are you kidding? Because before that, ours was 48, 48 hour follow up. So we came back, we have a, a think tank with our 100 plus communities in coaching every week. I mean, at that time we were coaching close to 250 a week. You can imagine. And, um, so we asked people, would you please try this? You don't have to. We're just curious if it works. Um, and so we just did that. We don't know what happened on that call, but we're like, we're just going to say thank you and ask if they have any questions. And every, only like seven teams tried it initially, that every single one had the exact same feedback. To me, it was phenomenal. They all said, I, people are shocked. We're like, of course, we're like, what do you mean shocked? Good or bad? They're like, no, good. They're shocked we're calling. Like, they don't understand because we're not selling them anything. And they're like, is that it? I like, guess it. And then the, the other thing is they all said they all have a lot of questions. And they, they loved it because like when we call a week later, they don't have any questions. They don't even know who we are. But when you call the same day, they answer because they think they forgot something. I mean, it's a really quick call. Why would you be calling the same day? They were just there, so they answer. And it gives you this incredible opportunity to just service them. You know, to say thank you, any questions. And you cannot go into selling mode here. So we always advise people to take 15 minutes at the end of the day before they leave to call any tours that were in that morning. Now, if they just left an hour ago, we're not going to do that. Maybe that's tomorrow. Or you could do your 48-hour call. But anybody that came in that day, if it's been an appropriate amount, a couple, of time, couple hours, imagine, you know, you go, you look at something. So let's say Dave went to see that builder. And he left. He's driving home, and he's kind of thinking, that guy's a jerk. I don't really like him. We're not going to use him. And all of a sudden, he gets a call. Hey, Dave. Yeah? And this is Mark, you know, the builder. Yeah, hey. Hey, I just wanted to call and say thank you for coming. You know, for coming and looking at what we can do and how we can help you build your home. We loved your design. It's beautiful. We'd love to be a part of that. I just want to say thank you. Thank you for coming and see if any questions came up on the ride home. How do you think that would have made Dave feel? He would have been like, wow, maybe the guy's not such a jerk after all. You know, or he would have been like, it would have confused him probably. Like, huh, that was nice. But no one would ever do that. People don't take the time to do that. That's service, man. That is customer service, right? I just got, I stayed at a hotel. I stayed at the Marriott in Detroit last week. And actually, we're, we have a new tool we're, gonna ch we're testing. I already sent it to my team. I loved it. I, when I left that day from the Marriott, it's the first time I've ever got one of these, I got an email from the general manager at the location. And it just said, it was very personal. I'm sure it was a cut and paste, like I'm showing you. But it said, hey, Tracy, just want to thank you so much for staying at the Marriott. I hope your stay was wonderful. Please, if you have any questions at all, this is my number. And it was from the actual general manager, but it was so personable. It wasn't a form from the corporate office. Um, and I was like, that's really cool. Like, I felt cared for. And I travel all the time. Like, I thought, what a great general manager. He's actually taking the time to see what my you know, experience there was. He probably has 200 other customers. Now, it probably is some kind of an auto form, but it didn't look like it, because that's the magic of technology. Um, but, but what I want to say is if you are willing to try this, guys, you're going to, again, move towards building faster trust, shortening the sales cycle. So our first week follow-up plan is same day thank you call, unless it's been within the last hour and it's you, know, you don't want to be awkward. Always trust your gut. 
Then next day, thank you card, it's not that day, handwritten, right? You guys do those, right? And then within 48 hours, you're brought to a visit connection sheet. Because we have to respond to them quickly with that sheet. So if you do anything or you delete anything, delete the faint same day thank you call, okay? But I would just wish you would try that. When you do the, um, let's say you say, I'm going to do all of those. You might think, well, how do I do that? So your flow would be what we just did. So Jason, I did my same day follow-up call. I write my thank you note. Now it's 48 hours later, right? Ring, ring. Is Jason in? Hey, Jason, it's Tracy Build calling. Hey there. Do you have a quick second? Sure. Great. I know I just touched base with you the other day to, to say thank you and see if you had any questions, but... Um, you know, I, I figured you had some time to process, you know, the visit to the community. And I just want to see if I could ask you just a few questions about your experience with us, um, if you have just a few minutes. Oh, sure. Absolutely. So now instead of, hey, just want to see how things are going, I'm actually saying, I know we just spoke a, a day or two ago, but I, I, before things slip your mind, I wondered if I can ask you a few questions. So what I'm saying to you is don't make it any harder than it is. You're following up. So now imagine this, this person. It's the end of their first week. They've toured three, four properties, which people do. It's, I, when I've toured three to four properties in a day, I always end up crying. <laughs> I do, every time. It's so overwhelming. It's very emotional, and I'm always using, like, someone I know, right? It's, and it's a fake visit, and I get overwhelmed. I can't imagine seniors who are not, who are really in a situation, and this is their life, what they must be like. And I've gone into properties literally where I feel like I was walking on my hands and he's crawling, begging for water, and there's a water thing and it's empty. And no one's offering me a drink, you know? And I think, what if you're on five meds and you're 80 years old? And you're parched, you know what I mean? We don't have service, right? So we've got to think about the experience as it compares to other people. So if you go to four other properties, odds are, I'm just telling you, either nobody's followed up with them yet, because they usually wait about a week, um, we found the first follow-up call typically happens in about seven days, if at all, seven to nine days. The second follow-up call is easily 14 days longer in our standard senior living space. You are more highly trained salespeople, so we know yours are happening. But I want you to understand that advantage that gives you. So if it's the end of the first week and this person liked your community, but also liked some of the others, I would say he who follows up gets the sale. That is my true belief. I know one thing that differentiates build is we never stop following up. I know my peers, I don't know, like I said, exactly who my competitors are, but I know that a lot of people just simply don't follow up. They don't even do what they teach, right? So when all of a sudden they did a great tour with you, they liked you, you know, it's all started to blend together, then that day they get a thank you call and they're kind of like, well, that was nice. You know, and if it's a couple, they're chit-chatting about like, well, that was so nice, Sam, that was, what do they want? I just want to see if we had any questions. Wow, that was it? Yeah, real. come on, there had to be more. No, that was it. Then the next day, there's this handwritten note in their, in their mailbox that's just saying thank you. And then one to two days later, there's a call that's not about pushing them to buy, but just asking about their experience and working to schedule the next step, right? They don't know you're working to schedule, but you're inviting them to that next experience. Compare that when you haven't even heard from anybody else yet. Who's making you feel wanted, right? Who's making you think? And we're going to be more loyal. And that community is going to rise to the top unless there's something wrong with it and it just did not make your short list. I really believe who he who follows up gets the sale because the, there are so many options and people are so confused and they don't remember who is who in many cases. And then the person that's following up and following up and following up is one keeping them engaged in the conversation. And that's what I'd love to see. It's like if we hunkered down as a company and everybody in the first week was two to three of those touches with purpose and meaning and discovery and drilling down and lots of opening questions and most importantly, a next step, except for on that follow-up call, that first one, same day, we don't do that there. Think about what that could do to your USCs, seriously. Are there any questions? I feel so bad, um, and, and I'll take that, like, I... I I feel bad I, we did not give you the follow-up to a visit connection sheet. We'll make sure. I'll email. Do you guys have it? Okay. I know when Jennifer had said you hadn't gotten to customizing that yet. If we send them this one, they can, can they start using it temporarily until we customize it the rest of the way through? Okay. So I'm going to, on the plane, send you that. Yeah.
Okay, I would just start asking you more questions. So, so first of all, I'm just kind of curious, what was it that you liked about it? So I'm going to get them focused on their need, not their, 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 so the goal is keep them focused on what it is they want. And then as you get them really excited in a shopper's state of mind, the value high, now we start addressing the pricing, right? We're going to get to that, but before we do, I mean, just what did you like about it? And, um, and you notice, the thing I hate about that first question is, I have noticed when you say, what was your overall impression of our community? They usually say it was nice. So you always want to follow up with that with like, well, what, did, what was it that stood out to you? Or what did you like? You have to get them to sort of talk. Then the rest of the questions end up going really, really well. Um, and we probably need to add that next prompt question. So the goal is, by the time you get down to this close, is that it's really becoming you know, the, the close should you, for you should be getting easier and easier. Remembering there's like maybe 10 closes before the big close, right? The, you should feel very proud and excited and successful if you book them to the next step. So with him, I'm just trying to get him back in. I might try to get the, the, the grandson back in. Um, I'm moving them forward and forward and forward. And if you can't get them to the next step, you really should stop and evaluate what happened there. Because you're in that training mindset. We have 12 weeks to reach mastery and really advance our skill sets to go from good to great. So what is it that maybe I could do that would make this better? Um, and, and we're always, always, I hope you've seen in every call, I'm trying to schedule that next step. Have you noticed that? OK. So, and, and what about when you guys did your role plays? Did you, there's a lot now that you're doing. You're working on um, your scale, you're working on recapping, um, optional close, next step. Then you were working on the last role play of someone objecting and you asking another question. Like, are you feeling overwhelmed? Is it starting to make more sense? How are you feeling? I told you, it's like the afternoon zombie mode. You need one major cheat sheet? Okay, so that's a good question. So on all of our tools, there's cheat sheets. I want to remind you. On the inquiry connection sheet, we give you um, the reminders, the triggers, the closes on your inquiry connection sheet. Um, and on your follow-up sheet, same thing. We have the five-step phone system built into it. You're going to be doing it if you're following the system. The close is there again, including on the follow-up sheet is the scale. This is an older one. On the new one, we have that scale of 1 to 10, so you'll have that. So the cool thing is, I want you to relax your brain a little bit. We're just here today and yesterday to kind of know what's coming. And I don't want you to feel like, oh my gosh, this is so much information, right? Because I know that's probably how some of you are feeling. What I want you to realize is the way we built the training and why people like it so much is everything I just taught you is embedded into those tools. But for you to use those tools, you have to understand why we're doing these things. And that's what the two days has been about. Um, there's a lot of people in senior housing that have basically stolen our training. I'll just use that word because that's what they've done. Really big companies. Um, I've had to call some with cease and desist. It's a compliment, but it ticks me off, right? You're, they didn't pay for it. And they're not training it right. So what they'll do is they take all of our tools, and they're usually old ones because they haven't worked with us. They hijack them somewhere. And then they give them to their salespeople, and they're like, on all of the inquiry tools uh, calls, we need you to start using this inquiry sheet. And the poor salesperson's like, Okay, I'm going to use this script. What is this, right? They don't understand it. And I've gone to so many of those companies later that did not succeed because this needs to be trained. And the people are like, oh my gosh, I was told to use this and I never knew what I was supposed to be doing with it. Now that I've been through the training, I get it. So it's really important you understand as we go through the coaching why we're asking you to do this. And then also in the coaching, we're going to start back over at the beginning. So you, we're going to start with that inquiry connection sheet, making sure you're following the things that people forget, getting permission to ask questions, getting beyond four, using your optional clothes. Then we're going to get into the visit planning. Are you truly pre-planning your tours? What is your wow? Are you doing any one extras? Um, are you asking for the deposit? And so on. So week by week, we're going to be asking you to actually execute this at your tours on your follow-up calls, and you'll be able to ask questions and so on. So we'll be supporting you along with your regional team who will be in their own program to be able to kind of like really be at warp speed supporting this whole initiative. Yes? So we get a lead, mm -hmm. and all we have is an email address. And you gave us a, a thing. Uh, the cut and paste thing? Yeah. yeah. Well, the goal 
call is we're trying to get their phone number or schedule an appointment on that first response. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yes. And try to set up some of the some of the discovery ahead of time so that by the time they do come to visit, what do you think? I think yes. yes. Do we okay, so So I would do the inquiry connection sheet. That's your inquiry. Your first call begins the sales process, right? And of course you can say, but I, and I like to use words like, hey, for future reference, I know that you're not looking for some time, but I'd love to go ahead, jump on the phone, see, you know, learn a little bit about you and your situation. I can get you some things proactively to start looking at. So even if you're looking around at other options, you'll be more educated about what's available, you know? And then you would do the inquiry connection sheet, whether you're calling them. So with a walk-in, walk-in, first experience, we've got to get in there and really understand in depth what's happening. You would do the inquiry connection sheet in person. And I know people are like, oh, you want me to look at something? We, we're writing usually anyways on a notepad, right? It's just now it's the inquiry connection sheet notepad. And we decided, people, do you mind if I take a few notes while we're talking? I mean, no one ever cares. It actually makes them feel that you're trying to be thorough. What other questions? Okay. We should have done the cha-cha now. Okay. Um, get ready. I'll hand them over to you soon. Just kidding. I'm just messing with you. Um, I, okay. What other challenges do you um, have when closing the sale? Availability of desired residents, downsizing, too much stuff, getting prospects to understand change, house. So to me, these are all true objections, right? So what do you do when you get an objection? Ask more questions. So they're like, my house is huge, I'm all alone, my kids live far away, how in the world am I at 72 supposed to pack up my house and move it? Right, we will help you. That, right, so you either solve, you have a solution, or you ask more questions. But the memory issue, you know, I, both Jason and his grandfather have said, how am I supposed to leave my memories? That's a perfect example of, you know, you know, I know it's really tough, but you can live in the past and the memories you have, or you can live in the future and bring your memories and create new ones. You know, which would you prefer? You know, we don't want him sitting at home by himself living in the past. Um, and plus, we're going to bring your favorite things with you, and you're going to have your photos and your albums and your memories. So, but really, we can overcome it, or we can try to lead him again to his own comfort level, to his own conclusion. How many of you brought a strategic close worksheet with you? So we had asked, um, can I see hi just so I get an understanding? Oh, cool. So we had asked you, don't worry if you didn't, we would asked you to um, complete a strategic close worksheet. So this is a tool that I would love to leave out, but I got to be honest, this is like, this is how you get velocity and move ins. So if you did it, it's pretty self-explanatory, but whenever we are, which is almost always, on fire, trying to solve a client's financial pain, right, because their occupancy is low, and they need to double their move-ins like in the next 90 days, this is my go-to tool. Because what I, you know, it's like a crash course. It's going to take 90 days for them to learn all of our systems. But what the systems, what, what people learn when they do the strategic close worksheet is that they don't know their lead, and that's why they've not closed. Every, that is the conclusion people come to every time. It's like a self-teaching tool. So we, we will usually say to people in our coaching, so please, every week we need you to complete two to three of these. Send them to us to review. We're going to use this in our next coaching call. By the time that coaching call comes, usually the student is like, oh, I already figured out what was wrong. You know, I already solved it, got my next step, already reached out to them. They've already moved that lead forward. Because what they discover is, ooh, you know, I just didn't do the discovery I needed to. So can I get one of you to talk a little bit about, let's just pass the mic around, and let's think about everything we've learned over the last two days, and have you share the challenge, your strategic close worksheet. So if you didn't have one with you, it's what it's called. We're taking a lead, and we're strategically thinking about how we can advance this lead to the next step and ultimately the move in. Um, you know, for you, the USC. So. And usually, I'm a believer that the answers will be revealed in this tool. And if they're not, we need to get back on the phone and do more discovery, which is really what 9 out of 10 people realize. So who wants to start? And then you can just pass it to the next person. Anybody, anybody want to start? You're just going to walk through your sheet. You, can you start over here? 
Uh, the gentleman, his name is Lloyd Berkson. Buickson, sorry, Buickson. And um, I had four appointments with him and it's been tough because um, his kids are gonna be paying for his entry fee and the monthly fee. And the son lives in Switzerland. I know I brought this up there. And it, I'm sorry? He came, he came right away. I wanna go and we can get um, long distance phones. You just have to call corporate and they did that for my phone so I could call Switzerland back and forth. So we do have that op option, you know, with Axe. So um, the son did fly in and the daughter did fly in from New York. She lives in New York and there's another community that they really want dad to go to. It's called Sinai. It's a brand new Jewish community in our area. And he is. Yeah. So they want dad to go there, but dad wants to come to St. Andrews. He loves St. Andrews. So I've had him come for lunch. I've had him come for dinner. And then he was, he's pretty lonely and he came to Passover last week. So it was $10 and one of our residents was holding Passover, Judith Cohen. And so we invited, um, I asked her if he could attend and she made room for him. And when I get back, I did call him the next day and had a wonderful time. And the residents really liked him. So I guess that what I did for the first step is I guess I need to reach out to the son again, listening to you and going back to Jason, you know, the grandson and maybe find out, you know, a little bit more because I haven't talked to him since he came. And he came probably about a month ago. So in, in completing your strategic close worksheet, did anything stood out, stand out to you that you realized you needed to better learn or understand to kind of get them to the next level? To get the, the dad to the next level or the son? The dad's already interested, right? Right. Who's the barrier? The son okay. and the daughter. And who's the decision maker? The son. He's going to pay for everything. Oh, so the son is actually going to decide even against his father's will? Yes. Okay. He's paying everything. Have He's a wealthy the wine son? connoisseur. I, I would highly encourage you to, I think calling the son is good, and I would get in real early and fast what's most important to you about the community you might choose for your dad, because I'm curious to what he'll say. Have you asked him that yet, or do you know? Well, when they were there, they just looked at names. Of, you know, it was very, you know, not Jewish enough for them. Sure. But dad really wants to be But I'm St. curious, Andrews. what's most important to you about the community you choose for your dad? Is it that his dad is happy and thriving, or is it just a Jewish community? You know what I mean? Yeah. And also, do you have any Jewish traditions in your communities? Like, do you do Sabbath ever? For, do you have a Jewish population there at all? I would kind of go prepared to the call with any of that, like sharing that he was at Passover. So it's not like he's not going to be able to practice his faith there, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was. He had a, he had so much fun. He really. Uh, Has wants he called his dad, his son, to talk to him about his experience that night? Yeah, he'll just call me and leave messages. He's like, Stephanie, don't forget me, Stephanie. Did he call <laughs> yeah. his son though to tell him about the great experience he had? Yeah, I, I believe so. I, I would think make so. sure because okay. you want him to call his son and tell him how much fun. Oh, could you see if anybody got any photographs or anything? Because that would be amazing too to have shared that with. Well, that would have been did anybody get any pictures? Mm -hmm. um, if not, could that be a strategy? Like, could does that that resident do Friday night sh Shabbat or whatever in her apartment? And could he be there? And could you know? Could you happen to drop by and grab a photo of them? You know, that would maybe help because it sounds like the son's worried. It's usually the other way around, but like that his dad isn't going to be around his own faith. But but this is where stand-up meetings are really important too. So not just the visit planning, but the strategic close worksheets are great to take to stand up to say, I'm really stuck. This is the lead I have. I'm not sure how to bust through to the next level. So what advice do you have for her to help her get? So dad is can't pay for it. The son has to. What's the timeline? The, time, the first appointment was towards the end of February. And when are they making a move? Well, he, he just rents dad now. So he, so he wants to move now. He could move in 30, 60 days, but they want him at another community. They're not sold on. Have they Santa. toured that community? Oh, yes. Have you, have you followed up to ask what he liked about that community as it compares to your community? Have you gone and like with the pop to a visit connection sheet? 
I would do the follow-up to a visit connection sheet with the data, with the mm -hmm. sign. That's what I would do. Because the questions we're asking are sort of on here. How long has it been since the sun was there? I didn't write that date down, but I, it was probably two weeks before Passover, so oh, okay. beginning of April. Yeah. I would get a hold of them, um, and we'll get these connection sheets out right away. Um, but I would go through, because, you know, and really discover, you need to learn a lot about what's going on in that son head, son's head. Because, I mean, is really him going to that community more important than his father's own happiness? No. But maybe he just thinks he'd be happy around Jewish people, right? But he doesn't realize he's, there are Jewish people, and there's other people, too. Mm -hmm. Yes. We have great chaplains. We really do. They're and wonderful. But we don't go to if he wants to. Are there Jewish activities he could lead once he and be a leader, um, you know, participate with the other Jewish people in the community and, you know, mm -hmm. create, promote intercultural relations. You know what I mean? Like, he's, he's in Switzerland. That's what they do there. So, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, what else could she do? Is there a rabbi that visits St. Andrews? No, there used to be at the nursing home, but there isn't any anymore. That might be worth That would be nice. You might need one anyways, like an outreach effort, trying to establish a relationship with one. Yes. Yeah, I know our chaplain just calls himself on the fact that he's a liaison between other religious leaders in the community and himself. So, you know, maybe reaching out to your chaplain and asking him yeah. I have a, a, just an interesting thought. The, the family that in, invited him to Passover, did, did they really enjoy the company of this prospect? Yeah, he's really entertaining. And he was a. Do they want him to move great. there really bad? I'm sorry? Do they want him to move there? Oh, they do. I'm they just do. wondering if you could even get them to write a letter to the son just to say how much they enjoyed having their father for Passover. Oh, my gosh, that would be great. You know, I think that might be son. nice. I like that idea. I'm, yeah. I'm trying to think of something compelling that we can show the sign like and literally mail it like i'd mail it to switzerland just you know you put a note in and by the way this is a letter i haven't read it. it's from our our hostess from passover you know and he's gonna if you're a child you're gonna want your parents to feel loved and cared for more than just you know going to this certain it's crazy yeah i, I know i i get it though mm -hmm. no it's okay. a difficult one. so in going through that process of the strategic close worksheet did it help you to process what was happening that's what i want to know and how to get to the next step or did you, do you still not feel like you really are there i i really feel when i did this that i really need to tackle the sun more i've been staying away from the sun and you know working with the dad and talking yeah, to I the dad i would wow the sun yeah, that's where, where on the bottom I wrote more work with okay. the sun. Mm -hmm. So keep the dad engaged while wowing the sun. Yes. Okay. So um, I, I know I want to ask them a question in a second. Um, here, here's what I want to ask because I think we're at a critical turning point here. It's 2.30. Now we need to do the wobble. Just kidding. <laughs> Does somebody know the wobble? You know the wobble? We might have to do the wobble because I'm losing them. Um, Sorry, I hope that wasn't on your mind. Drew the wobble? Okay, just kidding. Um, I, have a, I have a question for Megan and Lori. I'm sorry, I don't want to interrupt. Um, here's the thing. I, I am feeling the overload. I'm a feeling person, okay? I'm sensing it. I can go into the circle of influence or we can address that and we can just kind of stay on our topics, answer questions, maybe let them do an exercise as it relates to closing and follow-up. Um, or we can go into the circle of influence. I worry if we go into the circle of influence, it's just going to be like, oh my God, like, because that's outreach. So I, I, I just, do you agree? Like, it might be too much or do you, do you want that? Can we take a vote? Yeah, I do too because it's a whole nother, okay, I'm in agreement, okay, because I feel kind of guilty, like, okay, like I'm, I'm just going to bring on a whole nother system on top of all the other systems and it's, it's a lot and I don't want you guys to leave here feeling like just forget it all because I'm just confused. So what I'd like to do is be able to tie the systems together for you, um, but I need to know like 
from you, I know no one likes to talk, but a little bit of feedback from where there's still some holes and gaps. Is we've got 30 minutes left. You're not going to get out early, so you may as well just use this time. Um, what else do you need me to clarify for you? Do you need more role playing? Do we want to, we beat inquiry to death. We've talked about the tour. I feel like we've been beating closing to death. Do we, you want me to role play with you? Objections? Do you want to do something fun where two of you come up and you try to apply the system and we coach it live? Like you got to have some courage to do that. That would be fun. Oh, that's a vote. Yes. Send who up? <laughs> we should give him an award. Um, what, so you want people to come up? Okay, but I, this is intimidating to people to come up in front of a group, I, and I'm not going to make anybody do it. You, it's, public speaking is the fear of death for most people. So who is like an entertainer besides poor Jason, but if we have to, we'll use him again. But who like is willing to sort of say, okay, I'm willing to be coached live, and I'm just going to try to do, say, the, you can pick your tool. The follow-up to a visit connection sheet. We could just, um, you could do, like, um, a recap, optional close kind of thing. I'd like to see maybe the whole, whole follow-up to a visit. It might be easier. What would you say? Are you willing to do it? Okay. So remember, we're following the systems. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to answer this question real quick. Um, how often do you follow up after the first week? I mean, I wish there was just a method. To me, it's really depending on how that call ended. What you agreed upon is the next step. If it's an active lead, I like to see a touch every week, you know, but, and then in that first month, right? But, like, if it's not relevant, you should be so attuned. You know they said no to this, but you have agreement. You can touch base in the next 7 to 10 days on what's coming up they might be interested in. I wouldn't do less than that because they're actively sort of looking even if they say they're not. But each touch should determine when the next touch is. Does that, is that fair? And we have some really great other tools that if you're ready we can introduce you to. Like we have the second follow-up to a visit connection sheet, which is the hardest one I ever made because like now what questions do we ask? But it's, it's good and it's to be used on that third follow-up call. Um, so the, what matters is you schedule the next step the best you can based on where you are. It goes into Salesforce and you actually execute it when it comes up. Um, all right. So you guys are going to role play. Wh what? Okay. Who's up? So this is a man, his name's Richard Rex, and um, I've known him since, for about two years now. He's been to events at our communities, he's been to dinner, he's been to lunch, um, he's met people there that he knows, that he has connections with, um, he's toured OBT and Willowbrook Court with his uh, daughter who's a nurse, uh, he's got the thumbs up, he's had great experiences. Um, I've offered him apartments, <laughs> and um, I'm still not getting anywhere with him. He, each time, he gets this close and then backs away. So I call him my approach avoidance person. So. And he's a widow. He's a widow. A widower. Widower. When did his wife die? Uh, probably about 10 or 11 years ago. His wife's been gone a while. It's been a while. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I'm a gentleman, Mr. Rex. Nice. Okay. Ring, ring. Hello. Hello, Richard. This is Susan Mayer calling. Oh, hi, Susan. How? Um, just calling. Good. It's good to hear your voice. Um, um, do you have a quick minute? Sure. Cause, so the reason I'm calling is I wanted to thank you for coming to visit the other day, and I wondered if I could just ask you a few quick questions about your visit. Okay. So what was your overall impression of the preserve? It was really, it was nice. The apartment was big. It was a little expensive, Susan. Hmm, okay. So, did you feel it was the entrance fee or the monthly fee? Honestly, it was both. Both, okay. So, but other than price, it seemed 
like a good fit for you in terms of space? Yeah, you know, I have all those antiques I've been telling you about, and I think that will fit in that one apartment, the last apartment you showed me. The Jefferson 2? Yes, the I Jefferson 2. That was it. Okay. So, have you found any other communities that offer the same thing that we do, Richard? I know you've been looking around at other places. Oh, stop. Sorry. Uh huh. That's a yes or no. <gasps> okay. So. How do you feel the apartments at our community compared to other options you've been looking at? Well, you know, I went to Maris Grove last week, and they have that new building going in, and it's a really big apartment. So mm -hmm. um, I've been talking to Kimberly at mm -hmm. Maris Grove, and um, yeah, I think that apartment was probably very similar in size. Mm -hmm. And so similar in size, but I think when you and I spoke before, you were uncomfortable with their contract. Is that right? You know, Susan, yeah, I don't like that, that, that I have to pay extra when I need that higher care. I've been through that with my wife, and I, I just don't want to do that again. Okay, so, so is it fair to say that Maris Grove is, is really not an option for you at this point and that you're really most interested in life care? You're, you're feeding her answers. Okay. <laughs> Okay. It's, yeah. It's really hard. I didn't it even is. catch that. Tracy. Right. Good. But if yeah. you just trusted the sheet, it would not okay. you. That, that, and so, what you're doing is so normal. That's what you guys are all going to go through, mm -hmm. by the way. <laughs> so, what in particular made you decide to come back to visit us? Susan, you've been so great. I think we've been working together for quite some time now. And, you know, when you told me, when you called the town about the preserve, you know that that furniture is really important to me, my, my antiques from my, my wife's family. Um, it's really important, so I really, the life care is important, but, but it's very important that I bring that furniture with me. Okay. And I know you've been working hard with that. You, you took the floor plan and you've, you have it all lined up. And so, I guess what I'd like to know is what other concerns you might have at this time? If we, are, we, are all of those things that you're telling me, space, um, places to put the antiques, and life care, I'm, are there other concerns that you have besides those? Well, my daughter, I know, came in to see the assistant living and skilled nurse, and you know she's a nurse and she works a lot of hours, but I would really love for her to see that apartment as well. Okay, sure. Well, we can absolutely arrange that. That would be really easy. Is there a time where we can have her come in? I know she's busy. She works several different jobs, but what would be a good time for her to come by and visit? Is a, a weeknight or the weekend better? Her schedule, she, she works as... Um, crazy schedule. So I'd have to check with her to see what her availability is. Okay. So um, how about if you do that? And is it okay if I give you a call back tomorrow? Will you be talking to her this evening? Yes, I talk to her every night. Wonderful. So you talk with Franca and I will make sure that we can go back and see that apartment, and I'll call you tomorrow around 2 o'clock. Will that work? Actually, 3 o'clock might work. Great. Okay. Well, then I will call you tomorrow at 3, and we'll set up this appointment, and we'll have Franca come in and visit, and um, hopefully we'll be able to address all of your concerns at that time, and move forward. Richard, it would be so wonderful to have you here with us. I know this is something that you've been looking at for a couple of years, and you found other things that you like in the community, including um, Lynn Bachman and um, Woody Benson, and it would be so great for you to be able to begin a life here. Thank you. All right. Good afternoon. Thank you for calling Indian River Estates. This is Debbie Chastain. How may I help you? Hi, Debbie. Yes, I was calling to get some information regarding Indian River Estates. Oh, wonderful. May I ask to whom I'm speaking? Yes, this is Carrie. Hi, Carrie. 
And C A R Y, by the way. Thank you. And Carrie, what's your last name, please? It's Shirk, S H E R K. S H E R K. Wonderful. Thank you. In case we get disconnected, may I ask for your phone number, please? Yes. Jason, what was that number? 222 555 Thank you very much. So, prom what prompted your call today, Carrie? Yes, I was calling, um, again, just to get some information on Indian River Estates. Wonderful. Is it for you or for somebody else? May I ask that? Yes, it's for myself. Terrific. I hope you don't mind if I ask a few questions. That's fine. So you're looking um, for yourself. Do you have any idea what your timeline might be? Oh, gosh, not for about at least seven years. Oh, okay. Well, it's, all, it's never too soon to begin looking. Are you living in the area at this point, or have you, or are you, re have you been relocated? Oh, no, I live right in Vera Beach. Oh, you do. Wonderful. How long have you lived here? 27 years. Okay, so you're really familiar with the area. So you're pretty familiar with Indian River States also? I'm not. You're not. I bet you have some friends here, though. Um, where do you reside? I live right on the water. Oh, how beautiful. Which community? Uh, <laughs> the Vero more. Beach Club. Okay, well, yes. <laughs> well, we are Vero Beach Club West. Ah. So, and the wonderful thing about, one wonderful thing is we don't have to evacuate when the storms come. Oh, really? Yeah, really. So, how do you enjoy spending your time? Oh, I love the beach. I love to read. Mm -hmm. Um... My granddaughter. Let's oh, you, my granddaughter. your granddaughter. Does she live in Vero also? No, she lives in Pennsylvania. Oh, okay. Well, you know, we have communities up there too. So, oh, really? Where? Oh, up in the Philadelphia area. But I think Not she far. would probably enjoy coming down and visiting <laughs> in the winter. Oh, she loves coming to the beach. I bet she does. Grandma kind of spoils her, huh? Just a little. Okay. What, what can you tell me about your daily routine? Well, I, let's see, Mondays and Wednesdays, I have a bridge club that okay. I go to. And uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays, I have a Bible study. Mm -hmm. And the weekends, I just try and relax. Well, that sounds good. And I bet you spend some time relaxing, speaking to your granddaughter, don't you? I do. We Skype. Oh, okay. I think a lot of us are enjoying Skyping these days. So what's, what will be most important to you when you decide to come to a community? I know you said you're a few years off, and that time may come a little more quickly than we anticipate. Um, what's important to me? Well, I have a three-bedroom condo, mm -hmm. um, so I really don't need that all that space now that my husband's passed away. Okay. How long have you been alone, Carrie? Oh, my husband passed away about two months ago now. Oh, I'm so sorry. I know that must be quite a transition for you. Yes, it was rather sudden. Uh, other, other, do you have other family in the area, or are they all up, in, in, up north? They're all up north. Okay. But I bet in 27 years you have a lot of family, a lot of friends here. I do. I have my church friends. Which church? The Calvary Chapel. Oh, yeah. That's a wonderful church. And I know they had a wonderful Easter service this weekend. They did. And I assume you attended. That was outside by the river, wasn't I it? Sure was, bright and early. Okay. Um, have you? I know you're just beginning to look, and you're thinking a few years off. Um, have what other communities have you visited? This is actually the first. Well, you're starting with the best, but it is always good to do your due diligence for sure. Um, who else might be involved in a decision when the time comes? This is definitely my decision. Good. It, as it should be. But it's always nice to have the support of family. You said you have a granddaughter. So how many children do you have? I have one son. One son. And what's his name? Jesse. Jesse. Okay. And how often does he come down? Not that often. Um, he and his wife work a lot, of course. And with the, the grandbaby and their daughter, they have a lot work. School. Oh, yeah, I'm sure they do. How old is your grandbaby? She is 12. 
Oh, wow. So not so not such a baby anymore. No, she's not a baby anymore. And what's her name? Emma Grace. Emma Grace. Okay. Oh, she must be precious to you. She is. So how about if we schedule a time for you to come visit? I know you're just early, in early stages, but it's always nice to take a look around and meet some of the residents. I would like that. Okay, I'd love to, I'd love to have you out here and, pardon? I'm gonna interrupt. Can you try to recap? Can you try to recap sure. what you heard? Okay. Sure. Um, you mentioned earlier you like to go to the beach and you're involved in your bridge club and Bible study is important to you, is that correct? Yes, very important. Um, I think that would be very attractive to you um, at Indian River Estates also. I'm not sure if you're aware, but we are faith, a faith-based community. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Yes, we are Christian-based. Huh. We, we, have, we have two chaplains on campus, Bible studies, chapel every week. Um, so many things. I, I don't want to go through a laundry list. I think it would be wonderful for you to come out and, and take a look around. But certainly I could introduce you to some friends. Um, we have wonderful residents who enjoy bridge. Um, and enjoy going to the boardwalk to the beach. So that might be of interest as well. That'd be great. What other hobbies might you have? Well, the bridge, the reading, mm -hmm. Bible study. Yeah, and are you involved at all? Or um, do you, um, I'm trying to do it. I, okay. I got you off to your group. No, by recapping, I think I got okay. you distracted. It's okay. 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 Okay, so when might be a good time to come out? Um, maybe tomorrow or the next day? Let's see, tomorrow's Friday. Mm -hmm. Saturday actually does work. That would be wonderful. And is morning or afternoon better? Uh, not too early in the morning, but I could do a little later in the morning. Okay. How about if you come out around 11 and we could take a look around and then maybe have lunch and you could meet some of the ladies? How does that sound? Can we do... 11.30? 11.30 is perfect. I'm not a real morning person either. It sounds like we may be on the same page. So I look forward to seeing you at 11.30 on Saturday. We'll uh, look around the community and I'll introduce you to some residents and have lunch. Now where do I come? Go out Route 60 and we are on the north side of the street just past the mall and the guard will direct you to the sales office. I'll let the guard know that you're coming, Carrie, and we'll look forward to seeing you at 11.30 on Saturday. Perfect. Thank you, Debbie. It's my pleasure. It's been a pleasure speaking with you. Have a good evening. Thank you. All right. So what were your observations? So if you're the trainer and you're observing, what are your observations? Yes. At the end, she didn't get her address or her email. Well, and I did say it's okay if you don't, I mean, it's maybe not an act's okay. You'll have to, we'll have to get that with Megan, but an alternate phone number and, and maybe an email. I agree, it's, it's a little stressful up here. I mean, it can be stressful up here, but yes. Thank you. Yes. Right. Right. Well, and I think the most difficult thing that is going to be the lesson to learn here from this training that I'm observing in general is the present active listening to be able to respond like that. Right now, you guys are just kind of trying to focus on learning, right? And so it's kind of hard to do both. So you're going to go through a phase, for those of you that see this training through and really put it forth the effort, the first phase is going to be learning and you're going to feel kind of like frustrated, like I'm an adult and I'm learning something new and I've done it this way for a long time. Forget it. I mean, some of you are going to feel that way because it's going to mess with your system. You know what I mean? Like it's learning a new way. But if you really like trust the system and, and don't, don't be afraid to read the tools, I, I noticed that it's, it's easy to try to like, the tools can be in front of you, but nobody wants to really read the tools. Does that make sense? We, so don't be afraid to just read what's on the connection sheet. It will guide you, um, right? It, it, it's like that everywhere. It's always an issue. 
it's like people are embarrassed to have to read off of something. But no, yeah. Right. Right. So you need to be on it, going in order. So just so you guys know, it's going to be more painful for you if you have the sheet and you're like committed to using it, but you're not really reading it or you're trying to jump around too much. You're creating stress that's not necessary. You can just go right from the top and as things come up, just ask it, even if it's not on there. Branch off. Ask your favorite questions. You guys have great questions that aren't on there. Ask them. It's fine. But then drop into that next question. So it is a learning process, and I hope that you understand that and that you give this time. That's why it's really important we have the 12 weeks together. There is a big investment being made, you guys, over the next 12 weeks. So what I want to ask is to really commit for the next 12 weeks to learning, opening your mind, stepping out of your comfort zone, trying new things, right? I've been doing a hot yoga lately. Has anybody ever done that? Oh. Talk about out of your comfort zone. Sometimes I just want to survive the class. It's 120 degrees. And like they're doing things that I'm like, how does the human body do that? You know? And, and but I love it because it's it's so far out of my comfort zone that it makes me grow. When I leave, I feel so accomplished, even if I couldn't do the weird headstand backwards backflip thing. You know, whatever it is. You know, but it's like, wow, this is so exciting. And I just keep coming back. And I look like such a, like I don't know what I'm doing half the time. But you know what? You figure I'm on this journey. I'm, one day I'm going to come in here and I'm going to know how to do those weird poses and strange things, right? But I don't right now. But I'm going to keep showing up. I'm going to keep trying. I'm going to laugh at myself. And I'm going to watch every move that this crazy lady makes. And I'm going to keep trying to emulate it, right? So it's, it's that way with sports, with health, and with anything. Learning to eat better. It's all about creating new habits, new disciplines. And it's really hard when we've done what we've done a long time, especially if you're successful at what you've done, it's even harder to change your habits. But I just want to reinforce that the company is making such a tremendous investment. And what we're asking for is your effort like we saw here today. You've all role played willingly. You've all been serious. You've really applied yourself the last two days. Um, you know, today is a little bit harder because it's not as much fun. It's a lot of follow-up and closing, a little more kind of like out of your comfort zone. How do you want me to close? Recapping, optional close. Next step is it can be overwhelming. And just think, some people do this seminar in a day, like one day to cram all this in. So your team gave you two days so that you wouldn't have to be so stressed out. And you could really just absorb it, have the time to role play it. And then, so what's going to happen now is we're going to go back and um, we're going to start our calls in the next like week or so with Jennifer and our team. And you'll be on small group coaching calls. I'm just going to say, please, you cannot miss these calls. There are people that think, I'll just miss it because I have an appointment. I have a tour. If you knew what the company was spending on these calls, you would definitely not miss it, is what I want to say. It is so important that you treat this like an education. If you're paying for a Harvard degree, would you go to class or not? You know what I mean? So they're giving you that next degree in your success, and it's so important that you show up. Is that fair to ask? Don't be late. They're short. They're short. It shows disrespect if you're late. And really, for us, what it means is this really isn't that important to you. And I wouldn't harp on this, but we do have people that, when you're in a small group environment, think that we won't notice if they're late or they didn't show up. And what that's telling us immediately is this person's not taking this seriously. And then we have to, we'll try to see what happens the next week. And then the last thing we want to do is have to go to Megan and Lori and go, so-and-so has been late now three times. So-and-so has not shown up. Because we like to treat you like adults, like you are, like the professionals you are. But they are paying for this investment. So it's our duty. If we go at the end of the coaching and they say, why is so-and-so not seeing any kind of impact on their, you know, their conversions? Why aren't we hearing that in their calls? Oh, they haven't been on any of the calls. <laughs> Now you're telling us that? And then we get in trouble. So we will have to make sure that everybody's on time. It's going to be the same time for you every week so you can get it in your calendar. We already talked about time management. It's just like if you're a face-to-face -face appointment, you have an appointment at that time, and the investments you're making over this 12 weeks in you are going to be more important than that one appointment that actually you could have put somewhere else. 
So I'm going to ask you to, you know, really, really take this 12 weeks seriously. It's going to be gone before we know it. So, um, and during this time, we're going to support you. And we're really going to help you. We're going to role play with you. You're going to hear it from someone else. Jennifer Saxman was actually my coaching student like 10 years ago. Um, she's so smart, you know, worked at McKenzie & Co., like has a master's in business. She, is, she has lived, breathed, eaten this system and coached thousands of properties, you know, all of our coaches. So when you're learning from them, you know, ask what you need to. Really get in there and drink as much as you can and learn because, you know, it would probably be another year or so till you have another deep dive educational program. And then Lori and Megan are going to continue to work with you and take over that coaching. And your regionals will be very much coaching you at the end of that 12 weeks. They're going to take over the coaching. And then the goal is they're going to drive it and make sure it's sticking. Um, so any questions on what's going to happen next? Okay. None? All right, you guys just get me out of here. Yeah. Yes. Um, have you and Jennifer nailed down the dates? Or I assume that will all be coming out. Yes. Sorry, it's been set? Yeah, your regionals. The regionals will share it. When, when will you guys be getting that out to the teams? Oh, your team already knows when their coaching calls are? Monday. They start Monday? Or are you going to learn Monday? So you'll be learning very quickly when the calls begin. They're group conference calls, but I believe, I'm not sure, it might be a live web classroom where we see you and you see your instructor. I'm not sure which format she's using. I apologize. We, we have many different methods and tools. So. You can do what? You would prefer the live? It does. So um, I'll follow up with Jennifer. Just want to make sure we lock down all those details. Sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. There's, we, if we think there's going to be technology issues or people don't have cameras, we don't. Like, it does present some issues. It's, but we'll, we'll, we will bring you up to speed early next week. Um, most importantly, regionals, though, is if you know your call dates, to get them to your team so they can be in their schedule. They should be recurring same time every week so you know when to expect them. So I think from here, you know, as I wrap up my session, um, I just want to say that I'm really proud of you guys. I mean, you've sat here, you've really participated. I wasn't sure how it was going to go because I knew some of you had been through a couple of my programs. You weren't real excited about me coming back. And I get that. Sometimes people, when I come back, people are like, oh my gosh, here she comes again. You know, I'm going to have to like, you know, do all these papers and these tools. But I hope what you've seen is that they are proven to create success. I mean, our reputation is pretty strong, and it's strong because we literally fill buildings every day. This is what we do. No one questions if the tools work or don't work. The question is really going to be, are you going to work them? And then also, when you get that fear, you're just going to have to face it. Has anyone ever gone to a Tony Robbins event? Like, I'm just curious. So I'll never forget, like, the most scared time I've ever been in my entire life ever was I was going to a Tony Robbins event and I was going to walk on that daggone fire, right? And I'm, I mean, I'm a pretty brave person. Like, I'm not going to jump out of an airplane. My kids can't wait to go skydiving and stuff. I'm like, what is wrong with you? I'm never jumping out of an airplane. You know, I'm pretty low key, but I, I, I knew in my mind that walking on fire, just the, all I could imagine was how do people do that? It's like, what is it, like 2,400 degrees? It's real hot coals like that are fire burnt. And I couldn't get through my head. How do people walk on hot fire and survive? Would that not be a concern? And so I had booked a ticket with one of my leaders and I was taking her to this Tony Robbins event in New Jersey. We had flights, we had hotels. And all I could think about as a leader was, how am I going to walk on the fire? Because if I don't walk on the fire, she's not going to walk on the fire. I'm her mentor and they call me their fearless leader. I'm going to look like a big fat chicken if I don't walk on this fire. I mean, this was, uh, this haunted me for weeks leading up to this event because I was terrified. Would you be? It's 2,400 degrees. And all I could think about like day one, day two, and Tony Robbins builds it up. He like all day long, they'll start showing pictures of the flames and stuff. And I'm like, oh, are you serious? So, and then, you know, she wasn't worried about it. And I mean, I'm just like, 
coming on day three and your your seminar you think this is rough our seminar started eight they went till midnight no bathroom breaks no drinks you couldn't even find food it's part of his whole strategy to disrupt your body and your routine and destroy your spirit and all this stuff i mean it's crazy and i mean we were exhausted so by the third day i'll never forget what we should have done that here yeah, you are pampered. You are pampered. Yeah, there's no, and he didn't even go to the bathroom. I'll never understand that. But he says he trained his body to not have to go to the bathroom. And the whole thing is it's all about the power of your mind, right? He's proving to you that you don't need to eat, drink, or pee for like 15 hours. At, and, and I don't even know as a speaker how he didn't take a drink of water. You see me drink. But he's mastered his mind to the point that he tells his body he doesn't need this, and the body's learned not to need it. So that was the whole goal with us in the audience to go walk on this fire. So it was the third day, and I'll never forget, he was like, time to get up. And we get up, and he's like, time to go to the garage. You're going to walk on fire. And I, I mean, I was almost in tears, but I was trying to be the strong leader. Oh, I'm going to go do this. And, and I remember I got up there, and I saw the, I, all I could see from, like, this parking garage, there was all these fires. There was thousands of people, so I was way in the back. But it was almost like... Gung, 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 gung. There was gongs and stuff, and I could see the flames way up there. And I was like, I'm just gonna stay back here. I'm just over inching up, you know. <laughs> and I'll never forget getting up to that fire, and I was like, oh my god, like, and people are running across it. I was like, this is insane. I am a, I am a mind person. I use my mind for everything in my life. It's how I achieve my goals. But I couldn't figure out how these other people got themselves to physically walk through this fire. I, so I swear I had no idea, but man, I got up there, it was my turn, and I like kicked off my shoes, and I ran across the fire, <laughs> and I was like, I can't even believe I just did that. I just did it. I just did it. I don't even know how I did it to this day. I don't know how I did it, but I walked across the fire, and I survived. And I woke up the next morning at 4 in the morning, sat straight up in bed, and I was like, ow, and I had a little burn on my foot. I didn't even notice it till 4 in the morning. But what I'm trying to say to you is, it was the worst fear of my entire life, more than you know, having childbirth, right? It, the fire was much scarier to me because I just didn't understand as a human being how you can walk through fire and not fry your feet off. So what I'm gonna to say to you, I'm not even asking you to walk through hot fire coals. <laughs> did you do it? What, did you feel that way? Yes, and I love what you just said, convince your mind. So here's what I'm going to say to you. You are going to sort of confront a lot of fears with our systems. You know they're not hard. You know they're common sense. It's all about emotional connection. It's all about the things we know we need to do in sales. Your fear is going to come from, I'm an intelligent, educated adult selling a very, you know, high-end product, and I feel like a five-year-old because I have to read these sheets, and I have to do what this lady says when I already know how to sell. That is going to be your mental barrier that you're going to face because it's really, for you guys, it'd really just be easy to keep doing what you're doing. It'd really just be easier to keep selling like you've been selling and doing what you're doing. You're already successful. You don't, you're not, you know what I mean? You, I had my second command at my company standing behind me, and if she saw me not walk across that fire, I would no longer be thought of as her fearless leader. I would have lost face. And I knew that. And she would have gone back, not to be mean, she would have told the team, well, Tracy didn't do it, but I did it. Who would have been seen as the fearless leader then? You know what I mean? Like, I'm the wimp. So for you guys, you're just going to have to think, my fearless leader is invested in this program for me, and I am nervous, and I am uncomfortable, and this is weird, and I, I am an adult, but you know what? I get to be young again. I get to learn something new. I'm going back to school. I'm going to test my limitations. I'm going to see what I can truly push my USCs to, through. You know, what number I can get to that I didn't think was possible by using a system that's proven to fill buildings. That's what I'm going to ask you to do. And it's not going to be as scary as walking through coals, but it's going to be uncomfortable and you're going to be nervous. And whenever you kind of pick up that connection sheet on an inquiry or follow-up call or you're doing a close and you think, I'm just going to do it my own way, it's easier. Just think of me running through those coals and just try it. And maybe before you try in person, master your inquiry connection sheet because you're kind of not face-to-face. -face. You can do it over the phone. You can write on it. You can scribble. They don't see you stressing out. 
and begin to learn the process of asking open-ended questions, listening actively, responding, asking more questions, and then recapping. Please don't forget to recap because that's where they see everything they just told you and the value is built that gets them to say yes more often. And all those little things you're going to forget tomorrow on your ride home. But we're going to remind you on the coaching calls. That's why you have to show up and you have to be there. And regionals, what I'm going to ask, and sales managers. Sales managers, you are the leader. You have to show up on these calls on time. You have to make sure your team has these calls in their calendar. And the regionals, the same for the community teams. We cannot afford not to show up. You can tell I've been through this before, right? Because people will test our limits to see if they will notice, you know, if they're not there. So I need all of our leaders to really reinforce the importance of these calls and this investment in you. Is that fair? So if you get called out and you're a life care consultant, let's not even get called out. Let's just all show up. And in 12 weeks, we're all going to be better. And the cool thing is this entire system is now the ACTS retirement life system. It's not the build sales system. It is yours. You own it. You, you license it, it's gonna go in everything you do. You're gonna have your own internal new hire training academy for your new hires. You're gonna have it in your software in due time. It's everything, it's all branded to your brand. It's yours and we didn't used to do that and that's why we now are excited for you that this has really been an investment in your language, making it perfect. So your feedback is gonna be very important. We listen to you. So I just wanna thank you and, and Megan and Lori, thank you for believing in me and finally like, you know, moving forward. And <laughs> I'm so grateful. <laughs> awesome, thank you. <laughs> oh, thank you guys. I think I'll put my shoes back on. <laughs> thank you.